Hi guys, now that all of those nice things have been said about me, let me tell you two more things about myself. First is that I am an eternal optimist. That kind of stems from being part of this huge joint family with 16 people and 16 different egos and 16 different outlooks on life. I mean, there are daily clashes in my family. But at the end of the day, we're all able to sit together on a dining table and just laugh about our day. Because guess what? We're a family and we love each other. And at the end of this day, those petty little fights seem so inconsequential. The second is that, contrary to what has been said about me, I am not a very remarkable person. I mean, I think of people who have given TED Talks and who are going to give TED Talks today, like Olympic athletes, models, CEOs, and people who have ended literal civil wars. And then here I am, an almost 16-year-old girl who's just trying to get by her 10th standard by following all of the ICSE board rules, which is impossible, by the way, and who's just trying so hard not to procrastinate math or math homework, and who's swearing that she'll just watch that half an hour more of Netflix. And the only thing I like exercising is my tongue. And that's when I talk or sing. Now, unlike the rest of my family, I am not a very good singer. Don't worry, I won't be singing today. But my family still lets me participate in these karaoke nights we have. And one of my fondest memories is being on my grandfather's brother's terrace and jamming out to this song, Heaven is a Place on Earth by Belinda Carlisle. And this, it was like this ancient machine which actually operated on CD players, you guys, CD players. And there were these two lines in the song which I still remember. And those lines were, they say in heaven, love comes first, we'll make heaven a place on earth. Now, I didn't realize the importance of those lines when I was four or five or six, quite naturally. But now, nearly nine years hence, I realized just how important those lines were. And that brings me to my topic. So today, I have been asked to talk about the future you. Now, I could define this topic in many ways. I mean, I could take a more global stance and I could speak on the racism, casteism, religious intolerance and sexism that is still so prevalent in our society. Or I could talk about the climate crisis we're currently facing. I mean, guys, by 2045, we might not even have a planet to live on. But you know what? Being an eternal optimist in this generation means that I get to live in denial. So let's just breeze right past that. And uh, what I want to speak to you guys today is something that I can very confidently speak about, and that's myself. See, I've, I'm very fortunate. I've lived a very privileged, sheltered life. That's why I've not had many life-defining experiences. But from what I have observed in my, again, extremely long 16 years of living, is that the things I want to see in the future me are two values, and that's love and respect. Now, love and respect for myself and for those around me. So coming to my first point, why love and respect for myself? Why is love and respect for myself so important? Well, there's this adage that I found, well, my mother found for me while I was researching this talk, which was, I am not beautiful like you. I am beautiful like me. What that means, basically, is that I love myself for who I am, and not because I'm better or worse than anybody else. I mean, my best friend is a national level swimmer. If I loved myself because I was better or worse than someone, I'd be in big trouble. No, I love myself because that is who I am. And that's who I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life. So might as well, like, you know, love the person that you live with. And having respect for myself is so supremely important. And it's not because I, and having respect for yourself doesn't necessarily mean that I need to stand by my choices and I need to stand by my decisions, come what may. No, having love and res having respect for myself also means that, yes, I am a person who has flaws. I have made a mistake in the situation. You know what? Instead of standing by my choices, I'm going to accept that, yes, I have made a mistake in the situation and I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to grow because of it and I'm going to just try and become a better person in general. Having respect for myself has also enabled me to stand up for myself, to be more confident about myself without being a cold and rude person. And I instilled that kind of confidence in myself in the third grade. Why the third grade, you ask? Well, because that year, I had this amazing teacher who 
loved me and nurtured me so well and respected my individuality. I mean, one, she was one of those teachers who actually took children seriously. I remember that was the first year I tried out for elocution. And um, while I was trying out, I messed up a line. So I started crying and I ran off to the side. And my teacher told me, why are you crying? And I'm like, because I messed up a line in elocution, so now I won't get to miss classes. And I was very devastated about that. She just laughed and she patted my head and she told me, listen, you messed up one line, that's no problem. And then she told me that I had been selected for elocution. Then two weeks later, I stood up in front of my peers and I delivered a fun rendition of this poem called Buccaneers with pirate voices and everything. And the applause at the end gave me a kind of rush. And that's what made me become, evolve such a passion for public speaking. And that's what's enabling me to speak in front of you guys today. But so that's why having love and respect, that's why having respect and love for myself is so important to me. Another reason having love and respect for myself is so important to me is because I can kind of break free of that herd mentality that we all seem to be like, you know, extremely embroiled in these days. I mean, for me, it's something as simple as not liking rap music, even though the rest of my grade loves it. I mean, I think it's just noise. But um, herd mentality, I can see so much of it around me. I mean, mainly because of social media and of course, the growing populism in our country. But breaking free of herd mentality also means that I can be an independent thinker. And the more independent thinkers we have, I feel maybe our society will get a little bit better. Again, don't know anything, 16 year old, just trying to theorize what might happen. And another thing loving and respecting myself enables me to do is break free of FOMO. Now guys, who all here know what FOMO is? Who all here? Okay, so FOMO basically means fear of missing out. I have I suffer from very severe FOMO, as does my mother. So whenever my friends go out to dinner without me, I'm always thinking, oh my god, no. They're going to make inside jokes without me. They're going to forget about me. They won't be my friends anymore. And now that I think about it, it's kind of ridiculous. Because my friends aren't going to forget about me because I'm not there for two hours of dinner. And I feel like if I respected myself enough and if I loved myself enough, maybe I wouldn't be worried on missing out on a two-hour dinner just because I think that my friends will forget about me. And that brings me to my next point. Having love and respect for yourself also means that you take care of yourself. And I'm talking about self-care. Now, self-care doesn't have to be like, you know, it's defined in the newspapers, like, oh my God, you need to put on face, mask, face masks, you need to read good books, you need to listen to good music, you need to do yoga and meditation, because let's be realistic, nobody has time for that. Having, doing self-care for me means I just like maybe shut myself in a room and have some me time maybe once in a week because like I live in a family of six people again and like they seem like hell bent on invading my privacy. But um, maybe I'll lock, shut myself in my room, I'll play some of my favorite music and just have a kind of jam session to myself. And those 20 minutes just give me the energy I need, like kind of recharging a battery so that I can love and respect other people more, so that I have that kind of energy in me. And that brings me to my second part, topic, love and respect for those around me. Now, I honestly, from what I have experienced at least, having love and respect for the person in front of you, if you're having a fight with them, maybe not even love, maybe just respect, the conflict will sort itself out much easier. Like I was having a fight with my friend about two months ago, and I wasn't listening to anything she was saying. But then, as soon as I started realizing that, okay, I haven't really listened to what she has to say, and I started respecting her enough, I kind of realized that, you know what, once I listened to what she had to say, the conflict sorted itself out much easier. So that's how I feel like having respect and love for the people in front of you just makes it much easier in general. But the problem today with having respect and love for the people in front of you it's the hate culture that kind of seems so prevalent in our society. I mean, I'm talking from a macro level like Indian politics to a micro level like my school club. Um, I'll give you an example. Who over here followed the 2019 elections? The elections this year. Yeah, so um, I followed it with my family. And every night we would sit in front of the TV 
and watch the speeches the politicians gave. I mean, all politicians in general. And every successive speech I saw seemed like a race to the bottom of the barrel. I mean, the quality of content in them was so dismal. It was more about trashing the other politicians' policies rather than putting forth their own ideas and own policies. And everywhere in Mumbai also, like I would look at the hoardings with a man standing like this. And uh, they would just have slogans, like, you know, trashing the other politician. And that's the problem today. Being the best is not by pulling yourself up, but rather by pushing other people down. Um, so I've seen that in my day-to-day -day life as well. Like, I'm an avid manu. Who over here muns? Who over here muns? So basically what muns are, are model United Nations. And they're supposed to help children broaden their critical thinking horizons, teach them conflict resolution skills, make them better orators, talk to more people, learn more things. It sounds great on paper, doesn't it? But everybody who's ever munned knows that munning is basically just about winning that best delegate award. And that kind of toxic competition has just, has just like made munning so much more dramatic than it needs to be. I mean, recently I'd gone for a munt to Kolkata. And in that, I was representing Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee in the Indian parliament. And he's a man that I deeply admire. And him and L.K. Advani, the Home Minister at that time, were, for a lack of a better term, besties. But um, this L.K. Advani, because he wanted to win Best Delegate, I mean, he was a really brilliant guy and he won Best Delegate, so props to him. But he tried to turn the entire ministry against Atal Bihari Vajpayee. I mean, L.K. Advani revolting against Atal Bihari Vajpayee. That just shows how far removed from reality these months really are. And if this is the direction in which my generation is heading, I am kind of concerned for the world, you guys. Um, but again, eternal optimist, so that should sort itself out. Uh, but I have another question for everybody. And guys, just like help me out here. How many of y'all have been able to go six hours, just six hours without judging a person when you're not asleep? Without judging a person, being judgmental. We, okay, yeah, same, same. I cannot go six hours without judging a person and I want to achieve that goal someday. I want to be able to respect the person in front of me enough and love the person in front of me enough to just not judge them based on how they are or what they do or what they say. I want to let them be as different as they want without like, you know, me having to judge them. But then again, like, you know, I watch too many trashy soap operas and too many Bollywood movies to be able to imbibe that kind of love and respect into me. But again, I'm a person who's constantly evolving and I like to think that I'm constantly growing. So maybe one day I can reach that point. And now, guys, I'm nearing the end of my speech. And don't worry, I won't be like one of those chief guests who say, yeah, I'm nearing the end of my speech and then speak for like 20 minutes more. To summarize what I talked about, I talked about having love and respect for those around me and for myself. And how do we accomplish that? Like, you know, how do I accomplish that? I mean, it's impossible to keep your energy up that long for the entire week to have love and respect both for yourself and for those around you. Well, maybe just start out by doing one small positive thing a day that will kind of collect your happy vibes if that's not too superfluous and kind of just gather your energy. So, for example, when you're waking up in the morning, instead of waking up with a frown or whining about how early it is, Maybe wake up with a smile, or at least without a frown. And when you're reading the newspaper, instead of reading about the big political scam that day, because again, we live in India, so there's at least one big political scam every day, maybe read about refugees returning home after very long, or a good Sumatrian saving someone's life. And maybe instead of, like, I don't know, checking your phone first thing in the, mo in the morning, read a newspaper, read a book, and maybe instead of, Sleep, lying down and snuggling up in bed. Maybe you could go give your mom a hug or your dad a hug. And these are the kind of small positive things that if all of us just tried to start practicing and if all of us just, if enough of us did it, it might make a small positive change in the world. And if enough of us start doing it, who knows, we might make heaven a place on earth. Thank you.